Hey everybody, for those of you that don't know, my name's Hoopy and today we're back on the dozer. And today we are going to be working on spooling on some new cable. Off camera, I was trying to drag out some more trees and uh, I got hooked onto a pretty big one and this old worn out cable finally let go on me. She broke off. And we're going to be putting on this brand new 5.8 swage cable here. I uh, went ahead and bit the bullet and bought some good stuff. And uh, I got one of these uh, slide things here with the... Uh, with the keyhole for the 3 8 chain. That's why this here will be what's hanging on the end of it. And the place that I ordered that winch line and stuff from was Stahl Sawmill and Logging Supplies. This is the cheapest place I could find stuff. I think for the, the cable in the end, shipped to the house was like 300 bucks. So not too bad. And that was 75 foot of cable. And the first thing we got to do is get the rest of this old uh, cobbled up cable off here. So I'm going to start the dozer and I'm going to put the winch in the free spool. We yank this off here and see what we got to do to get this out of this uh, winch drum. So how this cable does this, at least on this one, it goes through here, comes back in, and it looks like they tied a knot in it and yanked her down tight. Now I'm going to show you what the book shows you're supposed to do. The book has two ways of doing this. And if you read this one right here, especially this paragraph, to conform to certain state laws, the winch cable must be attached to the winch drum so that it can come loose if the cable is unwound. But how this is supposed to do it is come up in, come back around and then loop back in and it says drive this into itself that'll hold it good enough that you can winch it up and once you get a couple wraps on there it'll winch anything you want this other picture shows just running it through like this so that if it gets down to less than like five wraps it'll come unwound this here's the way we're going to do it so i can't for certain say what's going to be the best way to get this cable out of here but uh i'm going to start with this Well, that there seemed to do pretty good damage to it. Should have brought a chisel. I didn't think about a chisel. Good old Craftsman screwdriver will do the trick. I believe we got her cut. Yeah, we got her cut clearing too. Well, that's a good start. I 
Is that a way to hook to this? I could probably yank it out of there. I got an idea. Brought the old geo trucker up here to the rescue. This ought to work. I'm just gonna wrap this strap around through itself, up tight on this cable. I'll hook her to the winch on the geo and see if it won't pull it out of there. All right, as for getting this other chunk out, I'm just gonna try to probably start and twist this drum down so I can hit straight on to it and just try to drive it out of there. One hour later. Well, this stupid thing's winning. I'm gonna start heading to the garage. I'm gonna take a torch to it. Well, we got her back up here to the garage. I'm gonna grab the torches and we're gonna try to burn that out of there. Well, I don't know how well you can see that. There's a hole down through there at least. I got a big orange dot in my view about right here. Um, but I think we should be able to get in there with a chisel or something and knock the rest of that stuff out. I, uh, I think we got her pretty well. There she be. There's that big old knot we knocked out of there. Let's see here, there it is. So, there's looking down through the hole. It's all cleaned out good now. Um, I'll twist this drum up here so we can look at it a little better. Okay, so according to that book, we run our new cable on. We go through here, around, come back out, and put a loop in it, and hammer the end in here. Whenever we draw that down in, it's supposed to pull down on itself and wedge in there. So we'll, we'll see what happens, I guess. I just can't see how it's not gonna wedge here and here and have a loop out one of the two. I hope not, but we'll find out in a minute. So I went ahead and I'm getting set up here and I got the cable third down there and it just so happens by luck, I have the perfect anchor point down here. We've got the old uh, Bobcat T590 skid steer sitting down here and that's what we're going to attach that cable to we're going to use once we get the cable in here to pull tight and winch the dozer back to it so i'm gonna go ahead and get set up and we'll get to her <laughs> all right went ahead and got the cable all spooled out here and uh let's go ahead and start getting this fished up into the winch and then we'll worry about hooking everything else up so the book says, evidently, shove this one through here. Of course, there's a little strand of wire going to give me a problem. So shove this one through here. Bring it up. Oh, boy. good bit through there <clears throat> feed it back through here <clears throat> talk about being tight
and turn this one around. And, oh. And jam this one back into itself. <clears throat> like that. Wow. That's going to have some tension on it. I, uh, I don't know how well this is all going to work. At least not for me, anyhow. But... I about took my head off. Uh, how are we going to do this? I don't know about this. We'll find out. I think what I'm going to do is I'll leave you guys sit here. And I'll go down there and get in the skid steer and start pulling that away. Uh, until we at least get this part done and then we can wind this up. We'll find out, I guess. Well, this might be a job for more than one person. And I ain't got more than one person right now. I don't know how they expect you to do this. There ain't no way. Okay, so after that first failed attempt at this, I uh, I started looking for videos and stuff. There is none on, on doing any of this. Um, but I started reading forms, and I found one on John Deere skitters. And these are the same winches that they ran on, like the 440 and 540 skitters. So somebody said on that form, run it up this one like you did that one. Bring it down and make a loop. And then we're going to take this end, and we're going to tuck it back down through here and put some vice grips on it to hold it then we're going to cinch down tight and essentially this loop is going to squeeze down onto that cable and that's going to hold it and ain't going to come off then so we're going to try it Okay, well, I guess we're gonna, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna go down there in the skid steer and start backing up and we'll see what happens here. Here's that article that I found about how to run that cable that I figured it out. It's on uh, forestryforms.com. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Other than this big loop I got in here. It might pull itself out. I don't I don't know. I'd say if I could have got it on and around, it might have pulled itself in tighter to the drum. Cause I think this is just gonna put me a big knot here. I don't know. I'm gonna pull the vice grips off. And uh you guys are gonna sit here, but I'm gonna be down there in the skid steer backing up some more. And I can't really see clear up here, but We'll find out. Well, 
Well, I looked up here and I happened to see that I was dragging the dozer backwards. So uh, I'll tell you now, it's in there and I doubt it's going to come out. I mean, I, I guess this is going to work. I'm not really crazy about how it looks, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, a lot of the newer ones use a wedge and uh, you drive it in and it cinches on itself. And one of the guys I work with, he said back in the 80s, he ran D6 in a oil field. And he said on those winches, the way they were, I don't, I don't know how it came through, but they poured lead in and around this socket and that held it to winch up. But it would also allow, because they were dragging like a hundred and some thousand pounds behind them, if the load started getting away from them, they could release the load and it would jerk the cable out so that the dozer didn't go with it. So, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, this one here ain't going to allow nothing to go, go without the dozer. But, uh, yeah, this ought to, this ought to work for me. I got her wound up on there. Um, I didn't do too bad at rolling it back and forth. I would have to say that if I had to do it over again, I'd probably use something like my truck and get somebody else to help me and just drag the brakes on my truck so I could steer it back and forth to direct this cable because pulling the brakes on the dozer started dragging the old skid steer down here. And then right there at the end, I went to stop and couldn't get yanked out of gear quick enough. So it it had uh, jerked this up here, and I stomped on the brakes and stalled the dozer because I was just at an idle. So, um, but yeah, all in all, it turned out pretty good. It's wrapped up on there good. I mean, this has got, it's just got some weight holding on to it to hold the, hold the end of it here. It's, so it, it's wound up on there good. I'm just going to leave it sit there and kind of try to train itself because I do know that, uh, if I was to take all the tension off this, this thing would just go haywire. And I don't have anything on the dozer itself really to, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if I want to chance that. Maybe I'll just take the chain and hook it up on the cage just to hold it there. I don't know. But uh, that there was spooling up this here old winch. Well, that there was uh, re-spooling the cable on this old uh, 3325 John Deere winch. I have no clue if it was right or wrong. I've never done it before. And I couldn't find anything to show me how to do it other than in that book. And there was no way I was making that swage cable do that. So I did it how I understood what somebody else does on a skitter. So um, I'm sure that if somebody says I'm gonna do it wrong in the comments, oh well, go for it. Uh, if you do know how to do it right, tell me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to learn what I'm here for. So if you guys like videos like this, go check out the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching.